very conscious of um, sticking to the time, so I did a very minimalist presentation. I'm going through a minimalist phase now in my uh, career. So uh, <laughs> hopefully I haven't brought too little and I can fill 10 minutes. Um, certainly the material demand d deserves it. Um, so I've come to present um, the framework which we used when we uh, debated microbial hazards in, uh, in the context of this vision document which we produced. Um, I must say, we're dealing about microbial hazards from the point of view of the hazards themselves, not of the technologies which might exist to... to uh, sorry. See? <laughs> Started badly. Um, not the, 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 the technologies and the strategies we use to diminish them. That will be treated by, by my colleague Marco a bit later on. So, first thing to remember, this has been, uh, Professor Bernati mentioned this. Uh, it, is, it is true, this is happening all the time. It's very recent, it's very much in fashion. Um, despite all of these measures we have, um, this month uh, there's already been Hepatitis A in frozen berries. There's another, uh, I uh, on one of the mailings yesterday, I received another one in the United States, Hepatitis A in frozen berries. Uh, Salmonella in Australia, it's not in the European context, but it could just as well be here. Um, and 298 ill from Salmonella from Chorizo in a restaurant scenario. And also, another thing we, which is mentioned in the, in the vision document, not just the morbidity and mortality, but the cost, the baseline costs of maintaining food safety um, no, no injury caused, but these recalls, independent of whether there is any morbidity or mortality, the recalls cost money, as do the baseline costs of actually keeping the whole thing running. Microbes are controlled using rules and tools. In this respect, microbes are slightly different to many of the other hazards in that we do have measures of, even when they're present, we can reduce them or remove their um, hazardous nature from the chain, which is very different to to um, many chemical hazards which persist. So we do have tools. And we do have more and more rules. And these are, I think it's true to say, largely science-based. It would be silly to say that all the rules are science-based. They're not. They're largely science-based. When the science exists and is improved, they will all become science-based. But we tend towards having a science-based system. Um, we do have a strong legal system now since the, all the measures after the, the, the white paper. One of the things which um, is important to measure as well is this increased responsibility of the food chain operators. Responsibility not just to comply with the rules, but to actually make lots of decisions about how the hazards are controlled. This is very important, especially as was mentioned by small and medium enterprises who may not have these capacities. And scientists are always looking for, and hopefully there will be up some uptake of these established and novel interventions to reduce microbial risks. As I said, that's something that Marco will be discussing later. New science is always needed to support the rules and the tools. To ensure the rules are drawn up and applied effectively and fairly and that risks are reduced as a consequence. Um, how do we measure the reduction in risk? Uh, we, do we really have the tools that allow us to um, allow us to say that this research has been well spent and there is a genuine consequence in um, food safety. To allow early detection, anticipation of new risks. So one is a derivative, can we actually detect it early? The other thing is can we anticipate risks coming on? To allow better detection and measurement of hazards. Always looking to do things more sensitively, more specifically, more cheaply and more quickly and incorporate these into management systems. So this is the science output which we need to, to help us support these, the rules the way it's governed, and also the tools, the way it's actually controlled. Um, to provide new and improved interventions, again, this is something that Marco will go into more detail about later on. I hope I'm not selling you too much, Marco. Um, <laughs> so, and with this consult consultation we did amongst the members, um, uh, which um, I must say was attempted to be as objective as possible, we did come up with some... Um, in these particular three particular areas, um, research needs which we identified. Continuing to work on the diversity of relevant microbes along the chain. Um, looking at the behavior throughout the chain. In particular, these characteristics such as persistence, resistance, stress adaptation, how the 
applying some stress may cause some cross resistance and therefore increase its persistence um, against uh, challenges which normally would reduce their abundance. Um, interaction between them, quorum sensing if this is the case, other types of interactions which we're finding talking today with the colleague Helga about interac un unlikely interactions in the formation of biofilms. Unless you really understand what's going on, you can't really prepare yourself for this. Um, and the occurrence and transmission of foodborne viruses, food viruses. With those uh, hepatitis A outbreaks recently, I don't think we need to make too much more um, arguments about that. We do really need to work more on viruses. Um, the second section, which we think deserves uh, attention, continued attention and more profound attention, adhesion mechanisms and biofilm formation, uh, mechanisms of interaction between pathogenic spoilage and other microbes. This could actually be in the context of biofilms, but in other contexts as well. Stress tolerance and survival mechanisms. We're looking at the microbiology. We're looking at the actual science base of this, not just not just describing it in the chain, but the actual molecular basis of this. Um, including stress-induced changes in virulence, the impact on new preservation technologies. Um, these, many of these new preservation technologies are called novel now. Some of them are quite, really quite old. And we still haven't got to the bottom of, um, haven't got to the, bottom of uh, the actual science of, the, of inactivation and the post-inactivation recovery, etc. things which have been done for heat treatments for a long time. Um, Antibiotics. Antibiotic biocide resistances, genetic stability and dissemination, efficiency of gene transfer elements. I think it's quite clear now that the, the dissemination of antibiotic resistance along the food chain is a problem, whether it's a food safety problem, whether it's a public health problem in a second sense. Uh, of course, that's a question, but it's a, certainly a problem. And it's really worthy of um, preparing ourselves for the future. Advanced technologies, again, looking at uh, technologies aimed at detection and um, measurement of microbes uh, along the chain, not on their treatment. Um, omic technologies for prediction and monitoring of microbial behavior, interactions, pathogenicity, growth, survival, persistence, many of those characteristics which we're uh, concerned about above. Um, we're also looking at these new advanced technologies to study them, and we think it's important that we should uh, continue this focus. Continuing to look at rapid methods, rapid methods is not something from the 1980s. It's rapid methods is still very much an uh, important thing, uh, something which we uh, incorporate more and more into the management systems. I think rapid methods are the flared trousers of um, uh, sometimes of um, microbiology, very popular at one time, and they seem to sort of come back every now and again. Um, improving and validating models. We talked again. Uh, Professor uh, Banati spoke about this. This modelling approach, as the approach has become more and more sophisticated. Yeah. Um, we can make uh, better use of these. They become more powerful, more descriptive. Um, and of course, they're becoming available, uh, these uh, more facilities and later generation facilities of studying these uh, large part of the production chains in situ. And this will op open out new possibilities to many of us. You know, a lot of these little facilities exist, but as these more sophisticated, more, 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 more modern, recent facilities, this opens, offers new opportunities. And these should be supported and explored as much as possible. So within the micro, I think I've managed to comply with the time. Thanks very much.